spiritual processing. Spiritual processing. I'm sure we've been blessed with the various sessions of charge we've had to the end. Um, left to me, I desire not to even minister again. Okay? Let me just say one or two things. And then we can together enjoy God's presence. Please pardon me for today. Spiritual processing. Spiritual processing. The Bible is speaking in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1. God said to Abraham, Walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, God will never require from us anything that he has not first given us the capability to do. Neither will he ask us to attain a height he knows it is impossible for us to attain. He said, walk before me and be thou perfect. So a man grows in his perfection as he began to what? walk with God. No wonder the Bible is speaking that Enoch walked with God and was no more. He got to the class of God that he had to be translated. He was not qualified. He was no longer fit to be dwelling among mortal men. Are we following? So seeing that reality, God was dispensing the same to. And he said to him, Walk before me and be thou perfect. So as we begin to journey in our knowledge of wanting to know God, wanting to know more of Him, wanting to learn His ways, wanting to understand the structure of the kingdom, understand the modus operandi in which things are done, what we are doing to ourselves is that we are get, getting into what? Perfection. Are we following? If a man will genuinely seek God from his heart, he will get to a point he will be ranked in the class of God. Are we following Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 29? He said, seek me. You will find me. But only on one condition when you do it with all your heart. In my little journey of work with God and in my little experience in the things of the Spirit, I've always tried to find out why do people take so long to encounter God? Why do people take so long to touch realities in, in God? Are we together? And God showed me that scripture. If you seek me, you'll find me. If only you do that with all your heart. So what's the problem? Many of us are seeking God in a place he cannot be found. If a man gives you an instruction to seek him, then that means he's actually somewhere. So your journey should be heading towards the direction of where he can be found. Are we together? Are we following? So you must begin to check. I'm trying to give you an understanding in a very simple form. Very, very simple form. Are we together? Seek me. That means he's somewhere. Right? He said you will find me. But only when you do that with all your heart. So our journey in our Christian race is to trace a pathway to God and begin to journey along that pathway. Are we following? How can I locate where he can be found? I must study the kind of kingdom he dwells. The atmosphere he survives. For everything he's, he's created to survive in a peculiar atmosphere. A fish survives and breathes healthily in water. Are we following? A plant survives well in the soil. So everything is created to survive in its peculiar atmosphere. Now why am I bringing this to us? Why he said, if you do that with all your heart. Many of us are seeking God where he cannot be found. 
Many of us are wanting more of God. We come to church. We bask in the glory, bask in His presence. And yet we don't want to forsake our sin. We are seeking Him in a place He can't be found. Are we following? Are we together? We are seeking God where you, you, you can't find Him. Are we together? So the earlier you begin to align yourself, the better. Now, hear me. He said, He that loveth me, I will love, and I will come and manifest myself to him. But he gave a synonym to that. He said, The proof of love is what you will keep my commands. Are we following? I'm making you understand seeking God as simple as it is. Seek Him in atmospheres, in pathways you know He can be found. Check your life. Check the kingdom from the world you have read about. Can you find God the way you are going? Are we together? Can, can you truly find Him? You dwell in sin, you come, you celebrate Jesus in church, and you go, can you truly, do you think you will find Him someday? You are seeking him in places he can't be found. Are we for so at a certain point in time? Jesus looked at the Israelites in his days and he called them, You are God's generation. And I was trying to search. Why will you tag a complete race, a complete generation, and a complete people and call them? An adulterous generation. Does it mean everybody there is sleeping with someone else's wife? And he said, Son, no. When a man's life is not lost in the purposes of God, he's living in spiritual adultery. Are we together? That's why he called them adulterous generation. They were totally disaligned from their gender. They were totally disaligned from the, for, from, from the reason of their existence. He said, you adulterous generation. So all our existence, all our living, all the meaning of success to us is to be lost in the purposes of God. To be lost in the reason of why he gave you breath. Are we together? Jonah 2 and verse 8. He said, Many have followed after. Forget the first definition of success in our generation. He said, Many have followed after vain, lying vanities, and they have forsaken their own mercy. They have pursued after lying vanities, and they have what? Forsaken their own mercy. So the true definition of a successful lie is a lie lost in the purposes of God. So every message you read, yeah, every book you read, everything you do should be centered on this simple statement. What is my agenda on this earth? What is the reason why he gave me breath? Why am I still existing? Are we together? Are we following? So God, in these last days, is fashioning a people for himself. I, I want to show you something. And subjecting them through varying kinds of process. Nothing is of importance. Nothing is of value in his raw state. So he's raising a kind of breed. That's why some of you might tonight is just to, per adventure, try a little to make you understand or bring you to a comprehension of the opponents around your life and destiny. God is raising a people that will be mantled with the very government of heaven. Men and women who will carry God for real. I was reading a book yesterday by Sudo Guswa. He said, people are not getting transformed. The world is not interested in church because believers are not filled with Jesus. 
So God is raising that kind of people that will be living from another different kind of world, another different kind of realm. men and women that will not function by the laws governing the mortal realm. They will be called immortals. They will live from that realm. They will not be affected by the things of the mortal realm. Because any man locked up in the immortal realm cannot be summoned by mortality. Death can knock at their door. Sickness can knock there. Are we following? A man locked up in the immortal realm cannot be summoned, cannot be affected by the things of mortality. So God is telling men that we walk the path of Enoch. That's why I started the way I did. He said, Enoch will walk with God. And was no more because God took him. They will journey in their work with God till they get to a point they are no longer qualified to survive in this earth. That's my panting in life. That's my heart cry. That one day I will walk with God to a point. You can't find me here again. He just takes me and says, You are not fit to leave. On this earth realm. Are we together? So, what is God doing to raise this kind of people? He's passing them through what spiritual processing. Why? You must be tried and tested before you can be trusted. You must be tried and tested. You must pass through pleasures of life before you can be given treasure. You must pass through spiritual processing before the treasures buried in earth in vessel can gush out of you. God, hide precious things in deep parts of the earth that men will by hunger journey to those locations and bring them out. I, I, I was telling someone, I said, to bury a normal human being, you know, some people are normal, it's very normal one. They dig what we call cispit. Is that not so? To heat oil in the ground. That's my profession. You dig 10,000 feet down hole. See where he kept it. That's one. Who told a man that there was something that deep 10,000 feet down? Comprehend that. I know that we have read about gold mines. As sometimes it collapses on people, he buries them deep down. Are we following? So God is subjecting us to spiritual processing. So sometimes you might not understand the expressions of the spirit around your life, but something is happening to you. Are we following? Something is what happening to you. Sometimes you have so many questions you don't even have answers for. That's why I came here tonight to help you. That by the time we are done with tonight, but adventure, you can be lucky and find grace before God to receive answers to the questions of your heart. I came to interpret a reality in the spirit realm around destinies. Are we together? So he subjects that man's life through various kinds of what process I was trying to look at my life from the day God picked me and where I am today and I was trying to see for adventure I can place my hands on varying processes that God picked me through what are the kind of processes he would take a man through to build that man to become what he wants that man to be to make that man lost in his assignment lost in his will and God just said to me son teach them about a place in God talk to them about my processor where I fashion men that's what I came to talk to you about tonight there is a place in God give me Psalm 91 where God fashions men you know, many of us have used this um, part of the Bible to carry out deliverance, warfare, and done so many other things. But there is a place in God. There is a place in God. 
give me John 2 23. There is a please. Give me John 2 23 first. Please look up and I'll show you something. The Bible says, John chapter 2, verse 23. Now look up. The Bible says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed on his name, beholding his signs which he did. Next verse. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew the hearts of men. Are you saying something? Next verse. He needed not that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. I said, Lord, why will a man hunger for you and you don't give him yourself? You don't commit yourself to him. He said, no. I know the heart of men. Sometimes there are start, certain spiritual endowments and start, certain spiritual equipments that when it is poured on us, there is no going back. So God takes his time. Are we following? I'm telling you, my job is to explain certain things. Why you feel I have tried so much for the power of God? And it seems like my prayers are not really heard. You must be tried and tested before you can be what? Trusted. He said he knew the hearts of men. He knew the hearts of men. That's why sometimes it seems like it takes so long. Oh, I remember the days we were crying for the anointing. Jesus. We there was no kind of promise we didn't make to God. Say, Lord, even if it causes you to put pressure on our life, put it. Why does it take so long? Why does it what? Take so long. He said he knows the hearts of men. God takes his time to watch people. He takes his time. He said he wanted the miracle, but he was watching them. He didn't commit himself. To commit yourself to a man is to give him the ability to summon your presence. So that you can shout, Jesus! And he appears on his scene. He comes with his presence. There is a level God raises men to they have ability to summon his presence. They have ability to make demands upon the heavens. But before he gets you there, before he commits himself to you, did you see what he said? He will know the heart. Are we following? So he began to put them through processes. Processes, processes in the spirit. Dealings, like some others we call it. Spiritual dealings. Spiritual dealings. You don't just understand. Why am I going through this? Why am I passing through this pain? Why does God seem to be far away from me? Give me Jeremiah chapter 4. Let me show you something. Jeremiah 48, rather, verse 11 to 12. Jeremiah 48, 48, 11 to 12. There is a longing. Jeremiah 48, 11 to 12. Only you can feel our ancient tempest. Now watch. He said, Moab had been at ease from its youth, and he had settled all his knees, and had not been emptied from vessel to vessel. Are we seeing it? Neither had he gone into what? Captivity. Therefore, his test remained with him. He's still in the raw stage. So God making a man enjoyable by a generation, making a man a sort of, he must empty that man from vessel to vessel. You know when you have, maybe you make um, zobo or kulu, and you want to get the shaft out. You begin to turn it, you leave the shaft. You turn again, right? You keep doing that till you get the pureness of it. He said, it, his taste remained with him. How are we together? Empty. From vessel to vessel. The operations of the spirit around the life of a man. Give me Hosea. Hosea 7 and verse 8. had mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Imagine you are making a donut and you didn't turn the other part. Half baked cake. Does it sound enjoyable? No generation sought for that. He 
is a cake not turned. So he must turn you to make you enjoyable by your generation. He must empty you from vessel. God will never bring you into a future you are not qualified for. He will keep you like the tide codes in a section of the world. Keep you there. Others will be moving forward. It looks like you're experiencing stagnancy. Sometimes you go to meeting and people are delivering you from the spirit of stagnancy. And you know there is something about my life. This is not demonic. Are we together? The Bible says, and the coat stayed there and was tied. And was watching other coats moving around the world and enjoying themselves. We follow him. And the master said, Go bring me the coat. When it was its due time and its due season, what happened to that coat? Men were putting their clothes on the ground, not because of the coat, but the presence the coat summoned. Did you get that? They knew Jesus' leg were not touching the ground. But because of who they see upon the coat, they were willing to what? Put the clothes on the ground. Imagine the coat said, Ah, ah, what that people are there now shining. Let me come out and do something. Where do you think it will happen? This is the problem of the generation we have right now. No one wants to go through the processes of God. Everybody is in a bid to show forth his or self. Everybody is in a bid to manifest something. Are we following? I come to teach you the ways of the Spirit. The ways of the Spirit. So there is a processor and an incubator in the Spirit where God fashions men. I'll show you where that incubator is. So that paradventure in your journey of work with God, when you see that door, you know someone that has walked that path has told you about it. When great men walk a path, they leave their footprints for others to follow. I came to explain some of the footprints you are seeing. That there is a place, a processor, and an incubator where God fashions men. Give me Psalm 91, verse 1. Psalm 91, verse 1. The Bible said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, the incubator, the processor, where God fashions men, is called the secret place of the Most High. I will explain that place to you. I've been there. It's not quite long I left there. I will explain it to you. It's not your secret place, I mean your quiet time, alone with God. No. Eh, eh. Hear what he calls it. Not your own secret place. It's called the secret place of the Most High. He said, if a man will carry the shadow, be overshadowed with the Almighty, he will have to what? Dwell there. God will by himself pick that man and take him to that location. I will show you very soon where that location is. And keep him there. It's called what? The secret place of the most high. to subject that man to heaven's beauty treat. Give me Esther 2.12. Let me show you something. It's a spiritual technology. And when those men come out, they come out with the same of where they've been. Desirable by any generation. Esther 2 and verse 12. The Bible speaking there. It says she was subjected to six months of two varying perfumes. First, I think Mary so six months. And the other six months, they were subjecting her to it. They were subjecting her. Subjecting her. They were subject me the secret place of the most high. Are we together? It's a place God keeps his generals. A place he keeps them. It's a place he allows them to take a hold of him. Till he himself take a hold of them. Hear me. If all your journey in the Christian faith is to 
take a hold of God. There is a place for that. But there must come of necessity that you get to a height and a peak in God where He takes a hold of you. He takes a hold. Then you see men doing dangerous things. You try, you collapse. You are wondering how. They don't feel it. He's taking a hold. It's no longer mortality existing. It's an immortal mind in a mortal one. Are we following? I read the story of um, um, St. Patrick of old. Such a great general. He prays hundred times daily. Right? You know it's not everything in the kingdom that is a decision or a desire. I've been there. Level, you know, God has taken a hold of a man such that he's operating beyond the comprehension of a mortal realm. So he hides them there and they begin to take a hold of him till he checks them, checks them, checks them. And you know what? He takes a hold of them. Where is that place called again? The secret place of the most high. Never amount to anything in God if He never took you there. That's how we know men that will last in God. That's how we know men with authentic power and presence. Where we can check where they've been coming from. Where was Elijah before we had an Elijah the Tishbite? Where was him all oh, this while? He was in the secret place of the Most High. So that you read through Bible history. Suddenly, you see the emergence of a figure. You don't know where they are coming from. They've been kept in the secret place of the Most High. You're wondering, how will a man just appear to the scene for the very first time? Say, if I be a man of God, by my word, there will be no rain or dew three and a half years by my word. Is that no arrogance and pride? I said you will get to a point you can make summons to the heaven. It's different from falling people down. Eh, eh. This one is not falling down. No. Eh, eh. You can make summons to the heaven. Jesus said, if I will. I can ask my father now to send 12 legions of angels right now because I understand the defense system of heaven. He will do just that. Call them to see whether they can answer you. Because any man coming from that place carries a mark. I thought you guys got fingerprint on him. Huh? That's what, um, what's his name? Paul was saying, I bear my body the mark of Jesus. He wasn't talking about tribes. Yeah, go and read it very well. He was talking about a seal of recognition. He says, see it. We didn't pick it on the ground. See the seal upon us. He said, you are the proof of my apostleship. The proof. The secret place of the Most High. But adventure, most of you are there right now. And you are looking for how to come out. You see that you are looking at other coats jumping around. You say, I want to come out. Depending on what he wants to do with your life, that's what tells how long he keeps you there. So depending on how quickly you are responding to his dealings, that's how long you will stay there. Are we following the secret place of the most high? So, what is this secret place of the most high? I'm going to give you four definitions. Number one. Here is the secret place of the most high. He will pick you. You want him? He will pick you. Then he keeps you there. Are we following? Where is this secret place of the most high? place of the most high is a place in time where God keeps you 
everything seems to be torn. He passes you through fiery furnace, terrible battles. It's like the whole world comes upon you. He subjects you to the baptisms of suffering. Suffering. You are wondering, you are looking at other people that seems to you in your definition successful. You look at your life, you are wondering. So I pray more than them. If I'm most of the times in those periods of time, those are periods of great mockery. I have been there. I've been there. I you know what I'm saying. Periods of great mockery. Some people will mock you like you don't know what you're doing. Are we together? It's a period, a place in time. He keeps you. Everything seems not to work for you. It's called the secret place. for deliverance yet heaven seems to be shut it has suddenly become a brass wall you cry you cry oh god save me out of this situation open door if i most at times you go to places you go to meeting and you come to grace and i tell you the power of god is heavy upon you the hand of god is strong upon your life you go back home you look at yourself you say are you sure it's not encouraging me to become more following it's a time where deliverance is far away from you no it must be a time it will look like the god that you serve doesn't answer prayers again he keeps you there you fast you pray that's why most of the times if you are not careful and you subject yourself to people that don't understand the modus operandi of the spirit you will suffer unnecessarily say go on 31 days pray and fasting the battle is from behind <laughs> You finish nothing solves. You go to another one again. They say make this time 40. 40. Because they couldn't understand that this man has been kept what? Somewhere. He will process you in those periods. Give me um, 2 Timothy 3 and verse 10 to 12. Let's do some scriptures. Second Timothy 3, verse 10 to 12. Very quickly, please. Second Timothy 3, okay. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, and what? Long suffering. Have we seen that? Charity and patience. Next verse. Persecutions, afflictions, which came on to me at Antioch and Iconium, at Lystra. What persecution I endured. But out of them all, the Lord he and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus must suffer they must be taken to this place if they must live what? godly they must be taken to that place and that's where many of them want to run out of are we following? Give me uh, Job chapter 20. Let's do some scriptures. I'll round up very soon. Job 23 10. We'll do scriptures in love. Please just follow me. He shall suffer. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come out as good. Even Job knows a man cannot touch it. If you ever want to be shadowed by God, he takes you to the secret. And you don't visit it once. You dwell there. It determines when you come out. You force yourself out. You become like what? A friend. A cake that is not turned. Incomplete process. I've seen some very terrible things. And you are wondering why people will start like a tornado and not last. Lot felt he had finished his assignment with Abraham. He was enjoying some small, small grace here and there. He said, you know, our cattle are now mind to mind. Let's separate places. 
and as stupid as he was, a father gave you the ability to choose. Be smart. Tell your neighbor, be smart. Use your head. There are ways a father behaves to you, you know it's a setup. I told you one last week, right? So last week, so we thought on generation, generation. That when a father sends you for an assignment and didn't give you a time frame, you are finished. Don't agree, ask him. When do you want it? That was what killed his son. Ask his son. He felt he had all the time. When Jacob came back, what was the first statement he made? How come you came so heavy? It means time was a factor to him. Be sensitive when you walk with father. Sometimes I do some things intentionally to my children and I just shake my head and laugh. Why? Because you know there are men that, and women have not passed through um, the secret place. They've not understood. That's where you learn certain things in God. Are we together? He will pass you to fire. So he left Abraham. And Abraham said, choose. Funny enough to show his level of still extreme stupidity. The Bible says he chose the best side where there was much water. A man you left up your father's house with nothing. It was his grace you were partaking of. And if you see what you are seeing in your life, now he said you should choose. You chose the best part. Wishing for his own cattle to be dead. He left Abraham for 20 years. What did he leave Sodom and Gomorrah with? Keep misbehaving. So yes, 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 yes. I'm still seeing some things happening. Continue. So we've been a little while on this earth. We've seen great men rise. Is my fall. You will not be the first, neither will you be the last. 20 years he came out of that place with nothing, ended up with no entities as children. The eldest daughter slept with him, gave her to the Moabites and the Amorites. That's the end of his life. That's why God doesn't commit himself, he doesn't dash men himself like that. You can't carry it easily the way I have it. No, he, he doesn't give people like that. There's something I've been crying all my life now. I was I was in pain yesterday. I said, Lord, just tell me, tell me. What is it exactly you want me to do? Just tell me. Why are you denying me this? He says, son, continue. When we are satisfied, we'll give you. is roughly 10 years. If I have eaten consistently, maybe 100 days in 10 years, I have cried my life. Still watching me. This is okay. Lord, give me. I have sown seeds. <laughs> I have received laying of hands. So we are watching. We don't give. Because once we give people, that's when you can see a man sleep on a lady come out and perform miracles. There are endowments like that. Once it's given, it's no way to again. Even the one they gave to the devil was not collected. He used it to form another kingdom and come the covens of witchcraft. So before he can trust a man, he must subject that man. Take him and keep him in that place. So some of you are in a place in God now. God what? The secret place of the Most High. It's a place in God. Not your quiet time. We will stay on verse 1 only today. But eventually if I have the grace, I will finish that scripture. Then you will see that there was nothing deliverance about it. You were codings of revelations. And I will say of the Lord. Take me six months to get to our mercy of the Lord. Are we following? Let's do some more scriptures. Um, give me Second Timothy 4 16 to 17. Very quickly. We are still talking about the secret place. I just want to make you understand it. Then we'll go through certain things there. Okay. And my first answer, at my first what? Answer. No man what stood with me. Do you see a place God kept him? He told you he was there too. Do you see his testimony? He said, no one. They invited, some of you, you know, they invited you up to 50 to 100 times before you came here. 
no, 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 no. You were chasing some men of God somewhere. <laughs> I knew I would face it because He has taught me in the secret place. You see, a time is coming now when he breaks you out totally, and suddenly you just begin to wonder where are those these people coming from? What is happening? Then that's why you see many of them running. Are we together? We understand the operations of the spirit. That's why it doesn't move us. He said, No one stood with me, but all men what? forsook me. I pray God that it may not be late to their charge. Next verse. 17. Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and what? Strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear and I was delivered out of the mouth of lions. Did you see what he went through? Did you know what he was trying to say here? That kind of criticism he faced. Jesus. He said he was delivered from the mouth of lions. There are people mouth in the Bible calls the mouth of what? Lions. They will say things they've never heard. They will say things about a place they've never been in. So have you heard of Christ? They've never attended a meeting. But they know it better. He said, I faced it. It's a place in God. He kept me. Are we following? Are we following? The operations of the spirit around the life of a man. That's what I want to teach you tonight. Give me um, 1 Peter 1.17. 1 Peter 1.17. He said, And if you call on the Father, who without respect of person judges according to every man's work, Past the time of your what? Sojourn here in fear. Give me Acts 20, 24. Acts 20, verse 24. Please look up. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto me, that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord to testify the gospel. We, we cut from the beginning. He was saying all the things he went through. He said, none of these things move me. Number two, where is the secret place of the most high? I said, it's not your devotion. It's not your quiet time. That one is called the secret place. Your secret place. But there is one called the secret place of the most high. He belongs to him. He takes men there. That is his incubator and processor. Are we following Number two. It's a place in God where he keeps you in a period. No one hears about you. No one knows about you. No one reads your story. No one looks for you. No one sought after you. It's a place. Are you there? You say, can you imagine the grace of God upon my life? Calm down. When it's time, they will see themselves. <laughs> if you need to announce it, you are coming out if you need to defend what you carry, you are coming out of time. Even Jesus said, if I testify of myself, believe me not. He said, believe me not. That's why I don't like to put titles in the flyers, not until they no name, not even a publicity. No. I don't want to skip this thing. I don't want to slip out of his hands. I don't want to miss my own process of making. I want to be fully cooked. So only then can you say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Only then. Are we together? Are we following? He keeps you there. Nobody notices you. You can manifest all the dimension in this period. Nobody cares. Nobody give it down. Nobody reads your story. 
be the time of your showing forth. Suddenly, you know, I gave prophecies of the strike. I followed it up to the best of my ability, right? I'll still talk about it today because there's good news. Now, I followed it up to the best of my ability. Did you hear it in national TV? No. A time is coming, I will say something lesser than that. They will paste it everywhere on newspaper. Giving terrible national prophecies. I decreed about rain for this year before there was anything called the rain. Tell the world how it will look like it was on our Facebook page. Did you hear it anywhere? But suddenly, a time is coming, you don't even give that accuracy. Just I perceive in my spirit. The whole newspaper carries it. Wait for that time. Are we together? You don't need to go and buy a newspaper and say, please, I actually gave a process, put it there, put it there. If you need to announce yourself, <laughs> he didn't tell you. Are we together? He didn't what? Send you. By the people, intentionally, they will begin to notice there is something different about this man. There is something. By themselves. They will know. Give me Luke 1 and verse 80. Do you know this how God fashions men? Like I said, here was Elijah. The only thing we heard in 1 King 18. And there came out a man, a prophet, Elijah the Tishbite. Where was he or this wife? Are we together? Where was he? Give me Luke 1 80. Very quickly. The Bible says, and it came to pass afterward that he went Luke 1 80, 80, 80. 80. There's no 80? Please. Okay. And the child grew and worked strong in what? Spirit. And was in the desert till the day of his showing forth. Another name for the secret place of the Most High is called desert in scripture. It's also called wilderness. Every man went there. <laughs> it takes every man there, even Jesus. Are we together? He said, To the time of what? He's showing forth. That means there is a time for the showing forth of what? A man. Don't bring out yourself before time. You won't last. I keep telling, especially my sons. I say, This ministry is a long thing. See your age. You do this ministry for a very long time, you'll be tired. All the notes you have copied, the messages you have dubbed, you will preach it, they will finish. How are you up to 30? No. How old is Papa Deboe? 70 something. So that means, but eventually you only stop at his age now in ministry. You have to stay for 40 something years. Are you running? It? You could do it for a long time. Come down. There is a time of showing forth. Are we together? Who does the showing forth? God himself. Did you see how he showed forth, John? I'm sure you know they were just not hearing a normal shout. No. There is a level a man gets to. He's giving a voice. He speaks here. Somebody in the hostel is saying, I am hearing a voice from somewhere. They give them voice. Are we following? See all your revelation now. No, they are just tired of you. <laughs> You are wondering this person is not even saying as deep as I am. Things are happening. They've given him a voice. The Bible says, when it was time for announcing John the Baptist, do you know what God did? He caused a wind to be shaking in the wilderness. Everybody was wondering, where is that thing coming from? And they began to come. Are we following? It's a place in God. No one read your story. You manifest mighty moves of the spirit. Doesn't make any sense to any man. Doesn't. There is nothing interesting about your life. You must be there. You, you must to be ranked a general in God's kingdom. You must go there. Are we following? And if he has not brought you out, stay there. You are not the one that decides when you go out. He decides it. Are we together? He decides it. Are we following? Give me John 2 and verse 10. Shina 
Now please watch. The Bible says, And saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good until now. The guy was not knowing that it is, it is a spiritual protocol that things are kept until now. God keeps them first. Are you get, oh Jesus, did you catch what I shared? He said, every man just bring people out. He said, no, no, no. In the kingdom, uh -uh. we keep them first. <laughs> then we bring them last. The child, John the Baptist, was in what? The wilderness. Surviving by locust and what? Honey. I, I thought some of my children with me yesterday, we were just doing some little exegesis of scripture. And I asked a simple question. The locust and honey. <laughs> Was it a physical thing? Find out. I don't say anything about it. If it was a physical thing, the Bible says he came in the spirit of Elijah. Was Elijah eating locusts and honey? Find out what it meant. It's an assignment. Are we together? He was subjected to that kind of meal. What meal was that? No, imagine. You know they call locusts? Para. So you thought he ate that? You need to think twice. I will open that for you. Find out. Are we together? Number three. Where is the secret place of the most? It's a period in time of your life where everything about you and God seems to be secret. Everything about you and God. That's why it is called a secret place. You will be searching for answers. Everything seems to be what? Secret. You won't even know why is God doing this to me. What is he wanting to get out of this? Are we following? You will be discerning God's will. I have many of them like that. Come to me. So I want to know God's will. I want to know God's purpose. Thank God for the way he trained me. Just begin to understand the oppressions of the spirit around them. Tell that same man to go and pray for you and discern God's will. He will give you in less than two hours. You pray to find out things about your life. He speaks to you about us. Because everything about that place is what? Secret. Till you are out. I've been there. Are we together? The secret place. Of the most high. Are we together? Answer seems to be scarce. You are looking for answers everywhere. Everywhere. You want questions concerning the kind of experiences around your life. Like I said, these moments of time and times you should be careful of who you hang around, else you can be misled. Are we following? You force answers by force. You will take wrong steps in life. You see, discipline people in the ministry. Once you come, they must give you answer. Everybody is the same to tell the person, I'm not hearing anything. It's a sense of maturity to get to a point where you tell a man, God is saying nothing to me. It's a height. It's a depth in God. I'll show you from scripture. You say he's saying nothing. The Lord is quiet. When the Shunammite woman came complaining to Elisha that her son is dead, what was his reply? He said, God didn't tell me this one. If it was, you say, I saw it somehow. I saw it so you start lying. It's a depth of maturity. Stand and say, I don't see everything. And I don't hear everything. That's what sustains me even in prophetic. If not, I have seen where people prophesy using online. No, <laughs> didn't you hear some prophecies last week? I saw his calling strike last week. <laughs> I saw my children ran to me, maybe to pity me. Say, Papa, I said they should call it off now. It's my business. He has not told me anything. You are following internet. 
or this they will fall your hand they will spoil your prophetic <laughs> you are using internet to prophesy that's because you have not been in a secret place where you sometimes need to understand that some things are secrets he will say nothing about them I've been there and I know that sometimes you ask God's question he keeps quiet so there are sometimes you are supposed to ask me a question I keep quiet if I hear nothing one little statement can mislead the destiny of a man. Be careful the way you operate your prophetic. You can't explain the happenings of God around the life of a man. Don't guess it. And say what it meant is this, what it meant. Why yet? And tell him, young man, over time, you'll find out. I might not know what God is doing with your life, but I know he's doing something. Be, re- be willing to be quiet. How will the man be in a secret place and then you are telling the secret something even you are not given an access to the spirit he closes the eyes of men towards your destiny they see nothing and hear nothing sometimes even by privileges of intimacy some of us enjoy he shows us about their life and say quiet he said he can trust you to be quiet there are things you tell me about some people and say this is what I'm doing quiet and I'll tell them peacefully it's alright just go ahead God is working somewhere. I don't give a damn whether you feel I'm no longer anointed. I knew before I came. Were you here when we started? No. I was waiting for you to find out. It's not you I need now to validate it. Intimacy with the Holy Ghost makes you disciplined. That's one thing He does there. See, when, he, when God takes a man into that place, when He comes out, he becomes more constrained in his workings with God. There are three courts in God. The outer court, the inner court, and the what? Holies of holies. Those signifies your body, soul, and spirit. Right? Your spirit is where God relates with more. That's the holies of holies. There are things you do in the outer court. If you try it in the inner court, you are dead. There are things you do in the inner court. In fact, it's so funny that not everybody enters the last one. They chain the priest with rope. So for eventually he dies, they will be drawing him out. That means the more intimate you get to God, the more constrained and disciplined your life becomes. Not more loosed. See, it's a sense of maturity. You know, because I'm not matured in God. <laughs> you don't know the God you look for. I'm teaching you the ways of the Spirit and the dealings of the Holy Ghost around the lives of men. How so many have truncated their years in the Spirit. How so many have gone totally out of God's ordinances. Totally out. What was Jesus doing for 30 years? Without starting his ministry. Have you asked yourself? 30 years. What was he doing? He was mastering the act of carpentry. Two reasons. I'll give you just one tonight. Because he will die on similar substance as that. You need to be used to it. You know the weights of every wood. Yes. You felt you know you can preach some light, open some revelations like I do. So no no, but right now I need to mind. I've gotten some some little, little lie. I, I can say some little little things. Is that not so? I've gotten something. You will get to a point it will look like they removed your brain out of you. Are we together? Make sure it's the time of your strength. And that period he announces you himself. Oh, you don't. He announces you what? Himself. Whether physically by himself, spiritually, or via another. In higher authority over you. Are we together? I'm teaching what will make you last in God. Stay there. Stay there. Where he kept you. Stay there. Just stay like the coast. Let them tell you they stay there. Don't worry all the coast you are still moving around. Stay there. When you come out, the difference will be clear. Are we to... I have certain of my friends that were very anointed. No, we are just trying to know God. I had anointed people around my life. Jesus. Some of them, they've gone, they've left us. 
we are just where we are. Where we are. Looking like nobody knows you. The difference is clear now. Number four. Give me first Samuel 22 verse 1 to 3. The secret place of the most high God is a place in God where he keeps you so that you can experience his mighty hand around your life. However, the people that gathers around that oil are nothing to write home about. <laughs> you will see a grace. You say, ah, ah. Ah, have you seen such? You will look at an oil. You'll be wondering, this thing should pull nations. Yes. You see the people around that oil. You are wondering. Let me show you something. Scriptures. Where did I say you should open up to? First Samuel 22. Bring the Holy Ghost everywhere. Bring the Holy Ghost. I'm saying something, but I'll talk about it later. Now, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. This was after he was anointed. He was anointed in chapter 16, right? It took David 15 years after that anointing in chapter 15 to sit down on that throne as a king. It took him how many years? 15 years. How many years did I say again? 15 years. Elisha stayed with Elijah for how many years? 22 years. How many years again? 22 years. Joseph was sold at the age of 14. He became governor to when? 30 years. 16 years. Though you saw it in one chapter. Where are you running? Are we together? Where are you what? Run it. I've been preaching since 2003. Ask them. And I was seeing the hand of God then. Nobody knew me. Are we together? I've been there. I've been there. There was a time it came so much I couldn't control it. You were in this campus. I walked through a meeting, people are flinging. If they all say, come and round up, ask them. They will shout, they say, hey. I'm just going to the pulpit. I've not heard the mic. People are running into the bush. Ask them, where? So when I see the rubbish going on, I'm wondering, who taught them this way? Who? They were there. Are we following? He will keep you. He will keep you. You will see experiences, anointing levels, yet you will check the kind of people gathering around it. Let me show you something. Okay, let's continue. Then David, therefore, okay, next verse, please. Next verse. And everyone that was what? Please read with me. Everyone that was what? And everyone that was what? <laughs> Are you seeing the kind of people being attracted by an anointing? <laughs> This was Samuel ordinated to M. David in a very strange way. Something that even God had to come and correct so that there will be no mistake. See the kind of people. Non entities. Stupid people. <laughs> Imagine you are David. See, are you sure Samuel has not missed God? Paraventure is a wrong oil that has come on my life. I came tonight to teach you the ways of the spirit. Are we getting blessed? See the kind of people. Let's read on people that are in debt. <laughs> but adventure, this was ministry. None of them had money. Is that so if you're in this condition, how will you survive? Because he needed to help you pay. <laughs> Get to feel God said. Go and start up a war. You just ask him in your ears. That's what they told you. I said, even if you were working with so much of money, he 
we ask you to sow it out to somewhere else, then start. Find out. If they've not told you, I tell you tonight. And I will tell you why he does that. We'll still go on further. Maybe I'll stop somewhere. The time can help me. Tonight. Are you seeing the nature of people? So these four things I give you are what is called the secret place of the most time. It's a place in the spirit where you are in, your, in our world we call it a time, a period. But it's a place in God. He keeps you. <laughs> you know God doesn't work by time so he doesn't call it the time of the most time. <laughs> he keeps you there. The secret place of the most high. Number one I said what's that place like? Huh? The place of what? Fiery furnace, battles, pain, thorns, difficulty, sufferings, persecutions, misrepresentations, misunderstanding. What's the place also looking like? No one hears a place of obscurity and silence. No one reads about you. No one knows you make a statement, it doesn't make any sense to anybody. Yet a time will come, you will just cough. Oh, someone don't want to write it as a revelation. I say, yeah, I take it, I take it. I'm, I'm, you, you don't understand. You will sit on a chair. Nations will gather to hold that chair. Yet you'll be sitting on that chair. And they will go near the chair the way they will fling. Not that you added anything now. Number three is the place of what? Great secrets. It's a time of great answers. You are looking for answers. You want to understand what is happening to me. What is God doing with my life? Okay, fine. I know it's ministry. When will be the time? I know it's this. Which time will it be? How will it happen? They've told me you've gone to meetings. People will keep prophesying. You go to the next one. You are thinking the man should improve on the prophecy. <laughs> he repeats the same thing. There's greatness of you. <laughs> wondering why is God repeating the same thing to me can somebody open it some of you that's why you go around to meet I'm sure you know but eventually that man will tell me something different I pray you will not fall into a wrong I have seen people I pray for you that you will not fall into a wrong car. Okay. What does God do to a man in the secret place of the most? When he keeps you in this place, what does he do to your life? This is a major period of every man's life. A major period. That's why I took the pain to teach us. Because like I said, most of you are in that season of your life. You cry, you pray, like a brass heaven you go to meetings you trip, somebody falls you come back to the room you look at a health issue just come on malaria you pray you pick your hand pick the anointing shake it it's on you you saw yourself in clinic <laughs> and some of you will be so ashamed to even go is that not so somebody will not say ah, man of God man of what there are men of God. There are people that are God's men. There are men of God. There are God's men. Are we together? Are we getting blessed tonight? So what God does to the life of a man in the secret place? Number one, He builds your patience and trust. Give me Romans chapter five. He builds your patience and trust. The Bible says that the trial of your faith shall have its work in you. It will give birth to what? Patience. And patience will find give birth to what? Experience. He builds your patience. And will trust. I've seen God's hand. He sent me here with 0.00. Only him knows why. But it has taught me to trust him. 
because that's how the just has been configured to live by by what? faith it's the way we have seen him intervene in times where it's like we have given up we can look at a sick person and say be healed that same God will show up are we together? he builds your faith your trust and your patience number two he builds your consistency consistency you are still spiritual yet you are still involved in some things he said stay there he keep working on it some of you rushed yourself out then you started preaching everywhere the next thing we heard they say choir master have given that gave the sit you see the problem right you see the problem the next thing we hear they say you have church money church money you touch the next thing we can hear they say nobody can talk to you again just this small small way God is in you he is now boss he is feeling like God himself self I have seen men that didn't complete. The man has 10 members, 20 bodyguards. He started a ministry today. He said they should rent a car that will come and be picking him. Four bodyguards, two suits in the front, two suits in the back. He started a church just today. So he just land the venue, they open the door, and he comes and put the first leg. The dawn. You didn't finish that school. Are we together? You didn't finish. Because if it truly keeps you there, you will know how to absorb shame. Who cares? There's a time for everything. You absorb shame. It will mean nothing to you. Some people can't even do the things I do. They can't. Are we together? He will build your what? Consistency. He will be checking every aspect of your life that he knows you have not gained what strength in it. Why? There are sins, there are demons, there are temptations attached to positions. That's why they just made you a leader in the fellowship. You are now sleeping with all the sisters. You didn't know, nobody told you. Let me give you this mic now. I'm using to preach now. Say, take over Christian. You will see how the devil, what you will do to your family in one month. There are devils attached to positions. There are temptations and sin attached positions. Paul said, because of the abundance of revelation, there came a messenger of Satan. Not because he sinned, because of what? Abundance of light. Are we together? There came a messenger of Satan because of abundance of revelation. So you see what you are doing to yourself. You see it. You see why you are going through what you are going through. Because even the church sometimes will not tell you the truth. They don't allow people to take time to grow. You gave your life to Christ today. They made you an escort. See what is happening to you now. At night, you are seeing a lady inside your dream. The person you are seeing is not Mary. It's not Mary of Jesus. It's a lady. Are we together? See what is happening to you. Nobody told you that there are sins, temptations, and demons attached to what? Positions. The Bible says, I am the good shepherd, John chapter 10. He, unlike the higher lane, when he sees wolves coming, he will run. So what happens to position? Wolves come. You will carry the battle of a congregation. But, um, a young man called me. He says, I don't understand. Anytime I just go and go, go, and, um, go for a meeting and come back, I just fall sick the way. I say your own is sickness, they are trying for you. 
She said they are trying for you. They will have killed you. Alright? They will bastardize your life, your family, everything. So he builds your what? Consistency. Text! Let me see his prayer life. Is it stable yet? That's what he does in that place. He personally sometimes will do some things to your life and shake your foundations so you revive your prayer life again. You will shake it. Not the devil, him himself, he will shake it. Then you go back here. It denies you for a long time. Those things you are crying for. So you keep. It's time to develop what? Consistency. What you do for a long time will naturally become part of, of you. Imagine you just pray today and God give you the miraculous power. They've lost a man with the prayer life. Is that not so? But when you know the way you got it, you will keep doing it to sustain it. I'm teaching you divine trick. It builds your consistency. This is what so many people did not maintain consistency. So immediately they just amass a position, start ministry, do one thing. Your prayer life is lost. Fasting life is lost. They can't study the Bible again. You've not seen that. The person will try, want to force it. Another is not working. I have seen them come to me. Say, sir, I don't understand. It's not working. Are we together? Number three. Anyway, I can stop. I'll stop. Can, can I stop here and we are done tonight? Huh? We do part two. Number three. Let me just finish this one. He works on your character to match with that of the divine. He works on your character to match with that of the divine. He checks areas of your life. He needs to work on begins to work on them. Suddenly, that's when you feel you finish a powerful meeting and God will just push somebody to you and say you have pride. <laughs> you now look at yourself. That bride is jealous of me. <laughs> He's jealous. I've seen, I've seen things. I've seen things. I remember, I think 2006 or so, I went to preach in a place. It's not as if I planned the preaching. I'll share that story over and over again. I just came from school and I entered the place to preach, to um, to worship. So let me go and visit these people. And I sat down just to bow my head to do my normal. This thing we do when we come to church. Father, thank you, thank you. I was trying to be like you. And so then I just said, Lord, as we receive the ministry of our son, stand like crazy to be, bless us in the world. <laughs> The prayer stopped. <laughs> what? I'm just entering to sit down. It's okay. I carried my mic. I have a trick. If I won't be able to hear, preach, I will sing. I think you don't hear God to sing. <laughs> and I was singing, singing, waiting for his voice to come. Singing, singing. Pop! The voice came. And I preached my life. People we had Jesus. The meeting was something else. So I finished, I went to Britain. I said, well done, sir. I said, sit down. Number one, the next time you try this again, you are finished. Number two, the next time... <laughs> I was peacefully out three yes, sir. But when I went home, I was in my room, I was just angry, crying. I said, this guy is jealous. Maybe he has never seen this kind of move. <laughs> it was when we've grown in our work with God. You know, you now sit and ask yourself, what kind of move have I, am I doing that this person has not really seen? What kind of light or revelation do I want to share? Are we together? So he walks on your character. Are we following? He walks on your character. Number four, he aligns your will and desire to match up with his. He aligns your will and desire to match up with ease. He aligns your will and desire. He will get you. Have you not seen that point? Where God has scattered your life so much, that's when you are saying, Lord, just take all of me. It's like he has useless your life. The only person that you can be useful to is him. 
Have you been there? Imagine maybe you were just looking for a book, looking for a book like me. And you had first class. Then you watch this, there's no problem. Then you look for a job, 10 years. You be the one say, Lord, I want to do your will. Oh God. Ministry now. <laughs> Is that not so? Say, Lord, use me. Use me. Then they say, they want to use you. You say, no, you want to work in your company. And you are not saying, use me, Lord. Are we following? Number, number five. He smears you with the anointing. I'm teaching where men get it. The inner chamber, the secret place. He smears you with the anointing. No wonder Peter was looking for how to explain Jesus. And he said a statement in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God, when a man starts with the word, how to do, he's trying to tell you it is beyond my comprehension. Right? English wise. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the whole ghost and power. He smeared on you, the anointing. Are we following? Luke chapter 4, verse 14. The Bible says, after he kept him in the wilderness for days, he returned back in the power of the Spirit. You can't come out of the sick place no more. How will a mortal man stand and insult people, calling them vipers? They say, baptize us. It's not everywhere you preach. Whether you say it's because I preach the truth to the other people run out of church, it's not true. Are we together? He was calling them vipers. See, you are your father. <laughs> you are vipers. They say, John, baptize us. Such a compelling anointing that had the ability to pull men. Yet he was there days eating locusts and um, honey. Nobody knew him. But see what the oil could do. He could pull men from the city into the wilderness. They now have to relate with his own world. Are we together? The anointing. God with a man. That's the anointing. If you've tested it, you know what it means. He smells it. Job speaking in Job chapter 29. Should I show you something about the anointing? Give me Job 29. That's one. That's the book of the anointing. That's the best book to preach the anointing from. Job 29. See what happened there. He said, moreover, Job continued his parable and said, next verse, Oh, that I were as in the month past, as in the days where God preserved me. The anointing is called divine preservative. You don't understand. Touch not my anointing. Touch not. That is divine preservative. You think we are going back to, the Lord is my refuge. No evil can touch me. I say it was not fair point. Uh, we'll get there. Alright? Next verse. When his candle shined on my head, and when his light by his light I walked through darkness. Next verse. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secrets of God were upon the tabernacle. The secrets of God. Suddenly, you pick the word of God, it opened for you. It opens. You know the anointing is there. As you hold the Bible, it sees the anointing. It opens for you. You begin to see beyond what mortal men can see. The anointing. Are we together? Next verse. He said, when the Almighty was yet with me, so the anointing is God with a man. And my children were about me. Next verse. When I washed my step with what? Butter. Butter in the scripture signifies what? The anointing. When I, and the rock poured me out what? Rivers of what? Oh, who is the rock? Jesus. The days of his youth where they kept him in the secret place. Did you see? He said, how oh, I wish it was like those days. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost it's like they robbed him that's what it means to smear man he smells it everywhere he goes 
suddenly everyone wants to take a notice of him everyone wants to get connected to him everyone is attracted by that man why the anointing the anointing when i see one i know it the anointing if you've witnessed and experienced one when you see one in a man you will know a man that despises grace in another man is the one is the man that doesn't have one in the first place if you know what grace looks like you will be finding it easy to see in other people are we together let's go when i went out to the gate see what the anointing was doing when i went out to the gate through the seats when i prepared my seat in the street next verse the young men saw me and they hid themselves they saw me they hid themselves are you seeing what the anointing is he said the agent arose and stood up See, it's so i've seen people's father saying sir The anointing is not my body size. Are we together? When you just come before a man. You know, I tell people, people wonder, you play with your children or not? Yes. But the anointing has a way of defending why. No matter the play, when they stand before that man, they know this is not me. It's when you don't have one, you'll be creating means to survive. Are we following? You'll be forcing honor by force. The young men hid themselves. The agent saw me and he stood up. The anointing. Next verse. I stop somewhere. The princes refrained from talking. President could demand my counsel. Why? Wisdom, impartation of wisdom. The princes refrained from talking and laid their hands on their mouth. Next verse. Let me stop somewhere nice. The nobles held their peace and their tongues cleaved to the roof of their mouth. Next verse. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. To concentrate on something. Next verse, please just read the rest. Read, it, read them. Next verse. He break and just talking about deliverance and the rest and pending the operations of the anointing, what it does. I will pick out something. Go to next, the next verse. Go to the next verse. What's happening? Next verse. Next verse. What's happening to your screen? I'm looking for a verse I want to show them. That's the last verse. Oh. Okay. Let me stick there. Is that the last verse? What part of the Bible are you using? Are you having a half version? Is that the last verse, 17? I'm looking for where I give you that verse. I think 20 or so. He said, when I spoke, everybody stopped talking. 21? Oh, wait. What verse is that? 21, right? 22. He said, stop talking. Why? The anointing. Are we together? Number six. Thus to a man in the sacred place of the old most high, he boosts your spiritual perception. He boosts your spiritual perception. Those periods you begin to understand certain things. You can perceive in the spirit. He boosts your spiritual perception. Number seven, he teaches you the way of the spirit. He teaches you the ways of the spirit. Just like I can explain this to you right now, it's because I've been there. He teaches you the ways of the spirit. Psalm 144, verse 1. Number eight, he overshadowed you with the tangible and feelable presence of the Almighty. 
The Bible says, He shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Such that you just come and you hold the mic and suddenly you look at the whole atmosphere. You know a kind of presence has come. Shadows you. He gives you the gift of His presence. He gives you the right and privilege to summon His presence. Go to a praise and say, You just sing a song. Lift up a song for me. You are the lion and the lamb. The word of the Father. Forever you remain. The same. You are the lion and the lamb. Are we together? He overshadows you. He said, when you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, you will abide under His shadow. Are we together? Number nine. He teaches you obedience. Hebrews 5 and verse 8. He said, Jesus learned obedience through the things He what? He suffered. He teaches you obedience. That's why I say the more intimate you get to him, the more disciplined your life becomes. He teaches you obedience. Constrains you. Bring you down by force. Just you sit down. You have to sit down. I one time I went to a meeting, I wanted to preach. I was supposed to preach in that meeting. And, um, cultivating his presence. I prepared, oh Jesus. I've never preached that message to today. I prepared heavily. I wanted to teach them the mystery of Mara and Haza. Powerful meeting. Repent. Came for the meeting. Prayed. They were waiting for me. I entered in like a bus. Sat down. It's time they say, come up to preach. I took my book, held it. Held my mind. He said, son, cover the book. Keep it. Begin to talk. Disobey and later go and please for mercy. Is this is that not true? You disobey them later, you bleed. I said, Eh, hey. you know how many hours I sat with that message? You know, you plan to bless life. But you see, the question is, it's not your message that bless life, it's the spirit that comes on it. You see, he taught me that way. Your obedience, and so I pick it and I said, Lord, no, it doesn't work this way. What do you want me to start teaching? You know, the funny thing, it was a vigil, so I was to preach for roughly seven to eight hours. <laughs> and let me preach for like three hours, and I know I just have four hours, I can, I can minister in half hours. And you say, No, 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 and I picked my book, opened it. The just is light. And you know, I have a very loud voice. The just is light. I'm guys in Boso Campus. <laughs> you see, they have Jenna. I said, You have this, don't start it. <laughs> they tried. Jenna was not. When I knew I was the Jonah, trying to spoil people's. <laughs> I said, Lord, I promise you, I will drop this book. Instantly, the light was restored. I only took one song. You deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our voice in worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our voice in worship and we bless your holy name. Lord, you are great. You do miracles so great. 
there is no one else like you. Still singing the song, what I heard was rattling, ba 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 everywhere. I opened my eyes. A young man stayed like that consistently for 14 hours. He was under an intense presence. Yet I wanted to preach the presence. 14 hours still under the presence. So he teaches you what? Obedience. Even Jesus learned it. Obedience is not an impartation. You learn it by the things he subjects you to in the secret place. Give me Hebrews 5 and verse 8. He learned obedience through the things he suffered. Are we together? Though he was a son, did you see it? No! But it was not impacted to him as a dimension in the kingdom. No! That's why you don't keep it. You can't. He learned obedience. Obedience is teachable and learnable through the things he suffered. So those things, those things you are trying to run away from wants to teach you obedience. Are we together? Wants to teach you obedience. Prepare powerfully for certain things. And the Holy Ghost will say, sit down. One time a powerful man of God was coming. Oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I love that man with my life. I See, I could do anything to him. Some of my children are laughing. Oh, my papa just said to me, sit down. You are going nowhere. <laughs> it's like they killed me. <laughs> there was, oh, they were there. He said, sit down. So at the level I am, I can say like the centurion. I know what it say go, what it is to say go and they go. If they can't tell you to sit down and you sat down, you can't tell sickness, get out and it will hear you. He said you will be ready to punish all disobedience when your own obedience is what? Complete. First Corinthians 10 and verse 6. You can't tell demons, get out, they will hear you. When a father on an authority of God tells you do this, you did not. You are killing yourself. You are weakening your strength in the spirit. If I tell you some of the things we go through, you will marvel for us. You will pity us. Are we together? You will pity us. Sometimes my children will say, Papa, let's do this, let's do this. You don't know why I don't want to follow what they are saying. I am under another divine instruction, not even directly from God, maybe from a father. Say, make sure you don't try this till I tell you to do it. And I will hang like that. It will look like I'm not making progress, but I will still hang. But eventually, the man misled me. Let it be upon him. I followed kingdom structure. He will teach you obedience. Are we together? Finally, number 10. He will increase your compassion and love. He will increase your compassion and love. Did you see what Paul was saying in Philippians 4 verse 20? He said, I now know what it is to abase and what to abound. I have seen pain. I have been in days without food, without money. So when I see people in that condition, it's natural with me. Do you see what he's doing there? In the secret, he will keep you. You won't have anything to eat. It will increase your compassion. Are we following? You will increase your compassion. Poverty is not explainable. The same way riches is not explainable. They are experienceable. Are we together? I know what it is. One time I was down with nothing. I was in this campus. One of my mates looked at me one time. He said, you are the poorest president. It was as bad as sometimes he will, I will have to borrow his hand out to it. And not because I don't have it. One of the time I had, the last money I had on me, I was coming to the meeting, to the fellowship. It's just me to So I don't have this. 
I said, give it. I just carried it and gave her. I went to fellowship. And I was singing one song. People were falling down. I give myself away. With tears. <laughs> but there was nothing to it. <laughs> and they thought I was leading them to somewhere. <laughs> You know, you have you got into a point you pity yourself? Is he fasting? Is he praying? Is, what is the problem? What am I not getting right? I've been there. One time, the last <laughs> money I had was, I think, 900 and something, or 900 naira. So I told one of my friends, I said, please, can you transfer like 50 or 100 to make it a thousand? Then we draw. Now you guys are enjoying. Then we go to both to withdraw. Call the ATMs, they don't work. So he went to Bosu. I was expecting that's what was my hope for eating. Because I had the kind of discipline. Nobody cooks for me, and I don't eat in people's places. I stayed there. That young man now decided to spend the weekend over in his friend's place. I made the mistake. I would have told him that my life is depending on this. That's how I hanged like that. Drank water. Water. So when I see people in that condition, it is easy for me to what relate with it. Are we following? Anywhere they are not in this compassion, it goes. So he must build it in you if you will truly carry the anointing. It will get you to a point. You 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 will see a situation you will cry. You will see a situation you will cry. Are we together? He will take you to that point. Finally, what do you do to maximize the secret place of the Most High? When I'm done with part one, I'll prepare for part two. I just want to teach us in this season the operations of the Spirit. All right? The dealings. So it's not a complex or dealings, dealings. I'll make you understand it the best way I can. What do you do to maximize? the secret place of the most high like I said don't ever think God will keep you there permanently no it's not true the coat was just there like that and was feeling if possible maybe dejected in life frustrated stagnated in life yet he didn't know he was being prepared for the last wine to be served he said in this kingdom we serve the best last he said, no, no, no. They used to hurry the thing out. Is that what the man told the, the servant? He said, they are supposed to bring the best wine at the beginning. He said, no. The structure of the kingdom is that we serve the best. Last. It must go through a process. Number one. I will teach you some of the things that will help you. Some of the things that I do. And I will show you from God's um, word. All right? Sometimes even God by himself steers you up to do them. But you won't know that he's trying to make you maximize a period of your life. Are we together? Number one. I need sound very quickly, please. Master the act of marinating. Master the act of marinating. Marinating is an English word for the mixing of spices. Mixing of ingredients. Soaking in his presence. That's what we call marinating. Master the art of culturing his presence. That is the secret to the anointing. Stay with the presence. Sometimes I do it. You see, do you know it's a, it's a secret of the ancient? I'll show you. Give me Act 13 and verse 2. I'll just stay in my office, just play music. I love, I love, I love your presence. Yeah. Twelve hours. You are culturing a presence around your life. Look up. Acts 13 and verse 2. Let me show you that it was the culture of the Asians. The Bible says, and they ministered to the Lord. They are not acting for a need. We call it ministering to the Lord. Just gathered. Pray now, brother. Say, run on a man. Say, run on a man. Say, Lord, I want more of you. 
Lord, I need more of you. I remember those days. There's this song I love. Those days we're looking for God. Oh, why can I sing it? Holy Spirit. This song by Carrie Underwood. Jesus, take the we Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, you see that song? How many of you are there with me? I finished the song line to line. You think I was the one that wrote it? You just be crying. Take it from my eyes. I can Oh, Jesus. Those days, we stay like that. Lock ourselves. We'll be watching some things, looking at some things. Holy Ghost. We'll play some kind of nice songs. Nice songs. Um, um, what is the song by Tasha Cobbs? I need your glory. I want your glory. Less of me and more of you is what I need. Show me your glory. Torturing a presence. That is the secret to the anointing. I will show you quickly. Um, give me um, give me look. Give me look. Sheka bodo sila hatakaito. Sheka montelegedish. Give me look twenty one. Give me verse 37. I'm seeing something. Watch. And in the daytime, he was teaching in it. And at night, he went out and abode in the mount that is called what? The Mount of Holies. The mystery of the Holies. Holy signifies the anointing. He was still there. See, now hear me. You can't biblically show me anywhere that says you should be sleeping at night. You can't carry it down to open. Did you see? He had no night or day. A day he was teaching, night he was still working. And Kononia with the anointing. Thank God for those that have been around with me for some time now. I say, hey, so this is how he lives his life. <laughs> Are we together? Are we following, please? Stay with him songs, you can sing your own, you just be worshiping. You are cultural in the presence. We call it soaking. You can do that 12 hours, not asking for anything. I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. Oh, bless me now. My See, don't always be in a hurry to do a pakatu kuba, a koko eba. Don't always be in a hurry. It's because the church is untrained. They say we sing too much. I need you. It's not a prayer. It's because you don't have common sense. Give me you. Everything else. Am I entertaining myself? Say yeah, we are just singing. We are singing. Then you are praying. My own is even more interesting than yours. I'm turning melody to what I'm praying. Are you seeing that? You don't have common sense. Are we following? That's why I see worshippers will come to the pulpit. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. They finish, hallelujah, hallelujah. They finish them. Who is like unto thee? Then when they are done, they say, let's begin to worship. What were you doing since? You must just... <laughs> you don't have common sense. You don't know what you are doing. You are a baby. I told you the highest form of communication in the spirit is songs. So that you will be in a retreat period. You are praying, you will not hear God's voice, only songs. He will be replying, you will hear songs. You will be singing them out. You don't know it's God talking back to you. Get my message on spiritual communication. You will be, you will tell, oh Jesus. You will be, you'll be singing. You don't know he's already talking. When you are done, you want to pick prophetically. <laughs> Are we together? He replies back with songs. He's not how that's how I am, not how that um, all these songs are written. He will just be playing his guitar. Pray na 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 man. Say na no. Say 
The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make the enemies understand. He was downloading revelations. He didn't know. The highest form of communication in the spirit are their songs. Should I prove to you the songs of David, the songs of Moses, the lamentations of the prophets? Everything is sung. Song! When he finds it not fit to communicate again by words, he wants to communicate to a real intimate level. He comes through song. Say, I'm going to climb my hair upon the harp and I'll unveil his dark saints. Psalm 40. Is it 40 words? Verse 3 or so? Are we together? Yes, you come. They say, you are, you are singing too much. You are singing too much. You need to pray. Pakapuku, pakapuku, pakapuku. No. It's not correct. You don't know what you are doing. I am praying more than you. Are we together? I'm praying. I can stay in the spirit. You'll be praying there six hours. I can just be walking through my office and doing oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey. And I'm praying more than you. You know, I'm not trying to tell you that you, know, you don't, none of you pray more than me. Do you pray more than me? No, you can't. So I'm not trying to tell you that you don't, you don't pray. <laughs> but you still don't pray more than me. Are we together? Try 72 hours stretch without sleeping for three days. Then I'll find, I'll think you're coming close to where I am. But I teach you the ways of the Spirit tonight. Are we together? It's a high level of communication. See, that's what I came here to do tonight. Just to explain to you the happenings around your life. So learn to what? Marinate. Learn to soak in his presence. It's called intercessory worship. Where you raise incense of prayer through the vehicle of worship. Make music. Feed times. The hell waves. It brings God right into the very presence to hear what you are saying. He said Zephaniah 317. He rejoices over them with singing. That's the original Greek word. He puts over them with singing. Isaiah, with joy shall you fetch. The fetcher for spiritual realities is joy. Let me show you, so Jesus. You've pushed me to show you. Give me Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 and verse 18. Let's start from there. Ephesians 5. Let me teach you a spiritual protocol. Why you need to marinate in the spirit. Why you need to soak yourself in the glory. He said, And be not drunk with wine wearing in excess. But be ye filled. The word there filled means controlled, prepared, stimulated by the Holy Ghost. Now follow me. Follow me. What are you seeing after the word spirit? A column. I told you what it means, right? It means whatever the next verse we say is telling you how. Give me the next verse. Jesus speaking to yourself. He didn't say to one another. To yourself. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, oh, oh. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Speaking to yourself in some, not to someone else, not to another. Speaking to what? Yourselves. In psalms and hymns and spiritual song. I throw mysteries and secrets of the spirit to you tonight. Making melody in your heart, your heart to the Lord. He said, When you do this, you will be filled in the spirit like a drunken man. Did you know 
not see what he does to us when we do that? When we are watching. Plan now, you are already gone. I teach you a mystery tonight. You pushed me to open it. I never planned it. I let you teach it some other day. So you see, he said, why even somewhere could tell Saul, go, you will meet the company of the prophets soaking. They are marinating. Were they prophesying to themselves? No, he said they will just be playing it out. So when you join them in that, you will contact a presence there. They just gather themselves. It's a culture of the ancients. First Samuel, I'm holding the spirit. Help me. First Samuel 10. 10. They, just, they just gather themselves to just do that. That's what the church is saying. We, we, we are singing too much. Are we following? You are a babe. Are we together? I give you a mystery. This is how I get filled. This is how I stay under the influence of the Holy Ghost pattern. Music all around me. Where do I want to have a wrong thought coming? It won't find space. The space is busy. Are we together? You are too idle enough for wrong thought to enter. I'm busy under the influence of the Spirit. He said, if you walk by the Spirit, you not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Colossians, he says, set your mind on things above. It doesn't mean you should be carrying your Bible to class. What does it mean? You are always conscious of divine presence. You are always doing things that put you under the influence of the Holy Ghost part time. You are going to class. Set your mind on things above. Nothing draws God easily into a romance like worship. Wait for my book. You will know. Nothing draws him into a romance like worship. That's why I said the protocol, Psalm 100, of even coming to his presence. What is the first protocol? Worship. You enter, that is how you open that pathway. It's not by pom pom pekeke, pom pom paha. No, it's by worship. Let me show you something. Give me, give me, you've touched. Give me Ecclesiastes 5. Ecclesiastes 5. He said, Keep thy foot where thou goest into the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. That's what you are doing. Are rendering the sacrifice of fools. You don't know what you are doing. Are we together? So you enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into where his courts with praise. Let's finish up this. Thing. Number two, what are the things you do? in these periods of your life I'm just telling you what you should be engaging yourself with sorry most of you have locked off your books <laughs> we'll be done now delve into secrets master the culture of searching and researching what you show affection for will naturally unveil itself for you the number of books I've read only on healing are more than 100 Yesterday I finished about three complete. Today I'm reading, reading one. Even on the way coming to the meeting, I'm still reading. What you show affection for naturally unveils itself to you. I even prefer whatever direction you are looking for something in God. Stay there first. Well, you read this today, read this today, read this today, read this today. Stay well. I wanted to master the act of prayer. I cooked up my bean with E.M. Bond's book. I can recite this book letter to letter. Letter to letter. I read one of those books, Power Through Prayer. Physical oil gushed out of my hands. Letter to letter. What you show affection for, will unveil itself to you. So that's one thing you do there. You begin to search and research. Study. Study. Journey. Study. Longing to know more. Study. Read it. Are we following? I'm teaching you how to manage that secret place when you are kept there. Number three, learn to trust even when you can't understand. Learn to trust God. 
even when you can't understand. Engage the mystery number four. Engage the mystery of the night. Every great man I know of are watchers at night. They don't sleep their night. Give me back that look. Um, twenty-one verse thirty-seven. What the way I live my life, I learned it from Jesus. During the day, I counsel people, I play a lot, I laugh. You thought I sleep with you. <laughs> my night is my most awakening time. Nobody says you must sleep at night. Look at the culture of Jesus. In the daytime, he was what? Teaching in the temple. But at night, see where he always go to? The Mount of Holies. In the daytime, he was strolling. Nobody could explain where is the source of his power. When they went to sleep, see what he was doing. The mystery of the night, the night time is a time for assessing secrets. It's a time for full-blown concentration because you have the deadness of the earth there. Even the Jews pray at the wailing wall at night. It's only tourists that come there and pray at time. They go there at night. They believe that is when the earth is in its most silent period and heaven is speaking. That's when secrets are released to men. Sometimes even when you wake up, not just to pray, you can marinate. Soak in the glory. Just walk around your room and worship it. You can carry a book, you are reading, you are worshiping. Are we going? Give me Job 33. Verse 14. I'll teach this at the topic some other time. Job 33. For God speaketh once, yet twice, yet man persevered in not. Next verse. In a dream, in the vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in the slumbers upon the bed, next verse, he openeth up the ears of men. That's the time for dispensing of secrets. Where lights are re- released to men. Because staying awake alone is a sacrifice. That you stay awake to come for vigil. Even if you, if you are not even getting anything, just the awake you are awake. To come was a sacrifice. God blesses you for it. Every sacrifice carries a reward. Are we together? Give me um, Daniel 2 19. I want to end this thing. I want to end this thing. Okay, I want to stop now. Dot. Daniel 2 19. Please look up. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in what? In a night vision. Not all this daytime. No. You even you know you are busy enough in the day, then use your night. I sleep more, then my sleep is sweeter from 5 a.m. 5 to 8, 9, 10. It's not 5 hours still. It's not 5 hours. I'm equivalent to you that slept all your nights too. But those other are not. The night time is the time for walking. That is the real time they walk. Stay with God. Culture, no distraction. You are not in a hurry. Ha, I need to wake up to something now. I need to go somewhere now. Unlike the daytime, you are just comfortable in yourself. The only thing in a hurry in your life is sleep. When you decide to go and lie down, you are not, nothing is drawing your attention again. So I encourage you engage the mystery of the night. Are we following? Engage the mystery of the night. It's the time for traveling. No traveling scripture was done during the daytime. All travails that has to do with betting of destinies we are done when at night. Read your Bible. Are we together? Number five, listen for instructions and obey them. Every disobedience truncates your years in the school of God. Every disobedience truncates your years, keeps you longer in the secret place of the Most High God. Every disobedience keeps you longer in the secret place of what? The most high. Listen for instructions and obey. Finally, for tonight, associate with the anointing. This one is, is as important as if I if you forget everything I taught you. The first point I gave you about soaking in the glory, and this last one. Don't miss it for anything. If you want to carry strange presence, if you want to ca- carry tangible and feelable, undeniable presence. Don't miss them. Associate with the anointing. That's one of my biggest secrets. 
Give me first um, Samuel 19 and verse 19. Stay so much around the atmosphere of men that carries what you are looking for in those periods of the sacred place. Stay around them. You can do that via their tapes. You can do that physically. You can do that via their books. Stay. Let me show you something. Look up. We'll do this then and we are done tonight. And the evil spirit, first Samuel chapter, what did I tell you? Huh? What did I give you? Say somewhere, is it 23? I said, what did I say? 19 verse what? Verse what? No. Did you hear me? First Samuel 19 verse 19. I didn't say 9. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Nioth in Ramah. Next verse. Let's talk about the last verse 24. And Saul, look up. I want to teach you that every man carries a kind of atmosphere. I left that place with something which anywhere I go, you will notice. You will see it. Are we following? You will see it. A man has his atmosphere. I have preached in all kinds of churches. <laughs> and I carry my atmosphere when I'm going. If I reach there, I'm not comforted with the one I see. I put my own there. Every man has his atmosphere. I'll teach you guys one time on atmospheres. Is that okay? I'll teach you on atmospheres. So you understand why you don't allow certain things around your life. For instance, if somebody got me angry and you're angry, you don't know what you are doing to your stare. Are we together? And look up. And so Saul sent messengers to go and get David. And when they saw the company of the prophet prophesying, and Samuel, a major prophet, standing in the as appointed over them, the spirit of the of God was upon the messengers of Saul. And they also, the other prophet, they came into the atmosphere of another man. Give me verse twenty. But eventually, this person said to a prophet. That's why. And when it was told Saul, so, he sent all that word messengers. He said those ones, but eventually he had prophetic grace naturally. Let's test something again. He sent some other messenger. And they did likewise. He said, ah. He sent again the third time. Say so maybe these ones might have apostolic grace, so they will not prophesy. <laughs> And they bumped into the atmosphere of a man and enjoyed similar grace. They also did what? Likewise. Next verse. He now decided to go himself. Then he went he also to Rama himself and came to a great well that is in Sekor. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And they said, Behold, they be at Naoth in Rama. Next verse. And he went Dita to Naoth in Rama. And the spirit, before he even got so close to the atmosphere, his own was worst. <laughs> and the spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came from distance. The atmosphere of somewhere picked him. Are you seeing? He has not even got in there. That means the other messengers were even powerful than him. <laughs> He's right on the road. Are we following? He began to also what? Prophesy. Next verse, let me show you something that is shocking. And he stripped himself naked. You see, it's almost worse. <laughs> Just bumping into the atmosphere of another man, you begin to contact that atmosphere too. I give you the mystery. Don't waste your time unnecessary in life. This world is governed by spiritual mysteries. How much of it do you have? How much of it do you know? There are things you can get so cheaply you are fasting unnecessarily. A man can give you in split of seconds if his heart truly loves you. I told someone about it. I can make you begin to hear names now as I do now. 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 Just right now. But I won't give you two because I know the hearts of men. So I won't commit myself to them. I say keep hungry for the glory. But eventually God will pity you one day. you exactly now what I'm doing. You will start doing it now. But people
people are dubious. Are we together? Associate with what? The anointing. Stay around them. People wonder, Papa, how do you pick the... I told you I heard another about you. Ask to write. I'll tell you. When we rise up to pray now. How are you confident to come and you are talking like that about it? I'm not even a prophet by call. But I just broke into certain things by privilege. And I can even prophesy better than people that are perfect by call. <laughs> rise up to your feet. Atmosphere. Associate to what? The anointing. You will be not just catching the anointing from them, you will be catching wisdom. See the things you have had today. In one meeting. That's a man's complete school of years in the spirit. He threw it to you in one service and yet they beg you to come. And you felt you did that person good. What? You can pray and fast. together. You can pray and fast. I pray a lot and I fast a lot. But half of the things I have in life didn't come by that way. Alright? Half of the things I have in life didn't come that way. I pray and fast a lot. Some of you try the kind of prayers I do, you will die. I can assure you, with the kind of stress I'm <laughs> with the burdens on me, you will die. is on a 90 days no food I finished 60 in 3 weeks interval if you try to you will kill yourself and do you see the way I'm still preaching you try 3 days then you lie down the bed like this you don't move is that why you say mm. you don't speak in tongues that's why I said it's God that takes the hold of the men they don't feel it you try you are wondering have you not seen some things you wonder how do these guys do? You try, 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 you first speak. <laughs> you, you, you have experience good. Are we following? You are wondering, ah, ah. you have this zeal, you try, it, it doesn't work. But I can give you grace now and transfer grace. You do exactly what I'm doing. Exactly. Associate with the anointing. Associate with the anointing. Always stay where you sit. Stay there. Very soon. See most of my children. I have one of my daughter very close to me. She's almost all the time with me. Recently I just observed something and I begin to smile. She said, wait, Papa, I'm picking something. I said, ah, it has happened. It, you see, if I didn't teach you prophetic now. She has gotten it. Why? The things that comes to speak to me when they see her too, they say, wow, it's like he likes her. So they talk to her too. Over time. That's why every true general we see on the surface of the earth that we are man to the transference of grace from another general, it was done when they asked them to pray together. Let's say someone held his hand. He opened the Bible, right? How many of you have read the story? So he took us out. He opened the Bible. So the spirit of revelation working with him is still there. As he's talking, he will say, I, this man, I'm introducing him to you too. The guy is contacting it. When a man prays, the whole of his grace is activated. And everything that answers to that grace and call is there. That's why the, that's the easiest way to transfer grace to you. Not by laying of hands. But if I ask you to come and pray with me now, you think you are doing me a good. Maybe I will be tired. You will be encouraging me. Ask them. <laughs> by the time I am starting, you are finishing. <laughs> you will sleep in his presence. Are we together? That's how it works. Associate with anointing. So most of the time when I want to give people certain things speeding, I bring them very close to myself. And every opportunity I have, I begin to transfer the grace. What works with me works with you. All of his wealth in my spirit be transferred. As those things are there, answering the angels are there hearing me. They say, wow, he said we should now work with him too. Suddenly that person begins to see the same grace at work. Work before you enter my office, right from the side, you are coming. I will I'll see you. Wait, somebody's this person is coming. 
sometimes it can be so terrible on me before you even leave your hostel. I said, I'm seeing this person. This person here, one even I'm seeing this person here. This is, there's nobody like that. In five minutes, he just came. She's enjoying the same thing too now. She just says, I'm seeing. I said, Good. It has happened to you. Over time now, before you know, it will become more intense. Associate. That's why I had to show you that scriptures. What did the Bible say about Jesus? Is it Mark 3 13 or so? He said he called 12 unto himself that they will be with him. Just stay around my word. Things were even happening to them, they didn't even know. And I proved to you. I said he performed a miracle by causing the storm to stand, stop, and be, be, be still. They say, hey, what kind of man is this? Yet they got to a point, they went to a city, they were stoning them. He said, shift, Jesus, let me call down fire. Jesus turned to and said, away. Hey! Who told you that you can call down fire? He never taught them. Are we following? He said, and they took notice of them that these guys, they hanged around that man. They had been with him. Something about that man's atmosphere has been gushed on them. Lift up your hands and pray tonight. Just one prayer. Or two prayers will pray tonight. I won't minister to us. Lord, show me your ways. Teach me your ways. All I said to you tonight are the ways of the spirit. Some people are dying terribly, not understanding the workings of God around their life right now. Some of them are even in some place praying, oh God, open your will to me, open your will. They will have been here tonight. They are looking for will. God will never reveal to you personally what he has placed in a man over you to teach you. Truth are not dispensed like that. Isaiah did not repeat what Jeremiah said. No. Ezekiel did not repeat what Isaiah said. They won't put it inside. He will not show you personally. Some things are teachable, including prayers. They say, Jesus, teach us how to pray like John taught his disciple. So even prayer is teachable. Are we together? Prayers is teachable. Matthew chapter 9. Say, teach us how to pray. Like John also taught what? His disciples. Associate with the anointing. You will leave that school faster. Because they will give you speech to understand certain things. You will have taken, not that you must understand it, but you will have taken decades. Like I told you, you can go to London through water bicycle, donkey, or aeroplane is your choice. You will still go. That's what matters. Choose for yourself which one you want to go to. Are we following? Choose for yourself. Half of the things I got in this life, I stand on that God to say it. I didn't get it just by prayer and fasting. Major of them was because I associated with the anointing associated with it are we together some of my children were with me for some days now this is some of the things I was doing with you in scriptures I just said okay we'll do our devotion together I said well, ask me any question you want any verse that is an issue for you ask me we're doing you know proverbs proverbs right do we ask some kind of funny question that you don't expect which one did they ask me yesterday? What, what question were you guys asking me? You know this, you just know in your mind, they'll say, gang, gang, gang. And I will take three hours, starting from Genesis to Revelation. Yeah. If, okay, they asked me, the Bible says, take honey, for it is good to the belly and health to, this, to, this, to the bones, something like that. I preached it for almost one hour, starting from Revelation. What am I doing? I am transferring something to them. That same way, give them over time, man. Give them just some few months or years. 
you will hold that same word. It's open like that, Father. He said, take honey. You didn't wish you go and buy this honey in the market. <laughs> Lift up your hands. Lord, teach me your ways. Show me your ways, oh God. What you see today, the exegesis of the scripture you see, they came as a result of associating with the anointing. One that operated in it. Staying close. Pew, the teeth dropped. Suddenly I hold the Bible. I found that it's, it was, I hold, even if I've not read it in my life, it will just open up. It will open up. It will open once I see a verse. No wonder David prays and one I open my eyes and I may behold wondrous things from the word. Lord, teach me your ways. Show me your ways, O oh God. Teach us your ways, Rabodi, O God. Teach us your ways. Shonam in Jesus name finally can you pray Lord open the scroll of my life make your plans and purposes for my life clearer to me open the scroll the Bible says, and Jesus went to the temple, Luke chapter 4, and he took up the scroll and opened to a place and read where it was written concerning him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Bible says, and he gave it to the priest as he was done. The eyes of everyone on the temple was fixed on him. Was fixed on him. Their eyes were fixed on him. Open the scrolls of my life. Help me to understand the seasons around my life. Help me to understand the operations of your spirit, the workings of God around my life, O oh God. Make your plans, make your ways, make your purposes clearer to me, O oh God. Shatake poro do siki telala. up your hands the lord bless and keep you the lord cause his face to shine upon you the lord give you an en encounters with himself i pray for you all through this break period as you live here tonight may the encounter field for you may this period open up a season for your life where you will receive clarity to God's purposes and plans concerning your life. In the name of Jesus, I decree, may this be the best of season for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
I don't care what others might complain about the strike. But you will look up to this period and say it was a major time of my life. It was a deciding season of my life. In the name of Jesus. I decree answers to whatever request you came with tonight. Whatever you have asked in your heart. And say Lord tonight do for me in this meeting. I release answers for you. I release answers for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. God of my call, oil of my life, God of our fathers. If I find favor before you, I pray, starting from tonight, give them 30 stretch days of encounters. 30 stretch days of mind-blowing, life-transforming encounters. For everyone here present in this meeting, I beg of you, my Father, reveal yourself to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you our Father. In Jesus name.